Jeff Juice is in the freaking house. I've been wanting to have you on since I started my channel. Thank you. Me yeah. too. <laughs> or unfortunately, we had a little turmoil there. No, it's okay. Yeah, you're awesome. We have a lot of great questions from the viewers and you have an amazing story and I don't know your full story. So I'm going to hear it with everybody else. But I know that you had some health problems and you use juicing, raw foods and water fasting to reverse those problems. And you are thriving. You're doing amazing. You're an influencer. You are just a huge inspiration for so many around the freaking globe. And I think you're all the way in Bali living your best life. So we're going to hear your story, hear your tips, hear your advice, everything. Everybody loves you. My viewers are like, finally, Jeff is coming on. So let's get into it. How's it going? How's Bali? You like living there? Bali's great. I love it. Life is good in the tropics. I honestly couldn't imagine not living in the tropics. Yeah, I, I, it's it's nice to finally talk to you. I've, I've been, I just like discovered your channel like hardcore the past few months. I'm like, damn, this girl is just like crushing it, dude. <laughs> Thanks. So, mad props to you for really take taking like the the hold on this 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 small niche that we have here. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, I, I think I think I heard Ted Carr say you're the Joe Rogan of the raw vegan community, <laughs> yeah. which, is, that's amazing. which is pretty tight. Thanks. Need somebody like you that's like kind of unbiased, that's not going to have like a personalized opinion. I couldn't do what you do. I'm yeah. a little too emotional and focused on on my program but I, I love what you're doing so it's nice no to yeah you. yeah I'm definitely not dogmatic everybody's welcome on this channel I don't judge I think we all got to do what feels right to us to live our best life even if it's not juicing and raw foods but yeah no thanks for that and so let's hear your story I think you have a pretty remarkable amazing story and from what I know you tried every diet I think you were even maybe carnivore maybe raw carnivore from what I'm wrong from what I remember and I think I remember you even hearing you say like you used to think the vegan diet was like kind of nuts maybe and you'd never do it. So let's hear your journey. I'd love to hear a little bit about your story so we can connect and then get into everything. Yeah, cool. So I'm, you know, I'm 38 now and I st my really my health journey started when I was like 25. Yeah. And so I, I was a commercial photographer for like 15 years, just traveling all over the world for pretty much my whole adult life. And so I was living very fast a lot of processed food, you know, long hours, not sleeping very much. And I grew up on the lower side of like middle class. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have a ton of money. My parents didn't know much about nutrition at all. So it was like fast food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Wow. Uh, a lot, lot of soda, a lot of milk, a lot of like mac and cheese and cereal and cookies and just uh, probably the worst of the worst standard American diet. I was highly addicted to candy. Wow. Like candy freaking addict candy and soda and cereal were like the shiznit for me. You know, I didn't, yeah. I had no clue, you know, yeah. my parents had no idea. And so when I was about 25, I went surfing in Costa Rica, drank some tap water, got a parasite infection, uh, lost a lot of weight. And that was really what started the, the downward spiral of being brutally toxicated because I took antibiotics and yeah. antibiotics short term healed the parasite, but long term yeah. just, just totally wiped out my gut. And so over the course of the next like five years, I was just slowly starting to deteriorate. And it, it, it was very unfortunate because I was life of the party. I just loved life, snowboarding, surfing, and just commercial photography and filmmaking. You know, it was very fun. It was a very fun life. And then and it wasn't you know? And so I became yeah. so incredibly bloated all the time. And it, it turned in from being like, Oh, I can't digest food super great. And I'm kind of bloated to being like, well, now I've got like pre-diabetes and 20 other health issues. And now I literally can't even digest water bedridden for uh, pretty much like two years. And so on the outside, I looked pretty fit and healthy. And on the inside, I was completely dying. One of, one of the worst days of my life, which I've had probably 500 worst days of my life. Imagine hiking, you know, six to eight hours up the side of a 14,000 foot mountain in the wintertime, carrying a 30, 30 pound camera backpack with a snowboard, ice picks, toe picks on my, on my snowboard boots, getting to almost to the top, feeling like I have a rock in my gut, throwing up, crapping my pants, having to like sit there on the side of a like almost vertical mountain and having to like take my underwear off because I'm just a complete mess, like shaking, crying. Wow. That was kind of, that was like the peak of really the downward spiral. And then a week later doing, you know, a, a photo shoot at the Houston Astros stadium with the biggest baseball player in town, just being like, you guys hold on. I got to go throw up in the bathroom. You know, it was, it wow. was really weird, weird for me to like be experiencing this. And 
during that last few years before I went raw, I had started like kind of trying different diets, keto, paleo. I tried this thing called an elemental diet. I don't know. Have you heard of that? No. It's basically where you take like a pre-digested macronutrient powder that's got like a little bit of flavor in it. And it's kind of like a juice cleanse, but you're still getting calories, but it's highly processed. So I did that a bunch, like for two or three weeks at a time, which which kind of set me up to like train to like learn how to fast, which in, in many ways it was a good thing because it did give me a relief in my gut, but long, long-term it was not a good idea. And so I, I just went down the rabbit hole of trying these diets, trying to naturally yeah. heal, going through the doctor, you know, spending many nights just crying, curled up in a ball, just like crap in my pants and puking five times a day. And then I discovered carnivore. And then after that, I discovered raw carnivore. And so <laughs> I discovered raw carnivore because my best friend at the time was, was I think five or six years deep into a raw carnivore diet. Yeah. And he, he, gave, he gave me this book called the primal diet written by this guy named Ogenis Vonderplantz, which <laughs> is such a hilarious, <laughs> it's a very hilarious name. And the book, it honestly made a lot of sense. And the whole theme of the book was that we're cooking our food. We're killing the bacteria and the enzymes and, and the nutrients. And I was mm-hmm. like, Bingo, this makes perfect sense. But I didn't realize that, well, I'm like nothing like a lion. You know, my body has <laughs> nothing in common with other animals that eat meat. And I didn't really realize that at the time. And I was also pretty heavily addicted to like chicken and bacon and eggs and milk. And so I was like, well, cool. I like the taste of that stuff. So sweet. But then when you when you try to eat that diet raw, it's a completely different beast. It it doesn't taste good, you know. Like raw chicken and raw meat is really nasty. Yeah. And so, <laughs> it, <laughs> coming from like you know the past six years of eating a fruit fruitarian diet, like thinking back, I'm like, why was I doing that? It's just like I mean, I would have eaten shit, literally shit, if it meant I would have healed myself. And I had looked into doing fecal matter transplants and all this other stuff to like change my gut. And I didn't, I didn't realize what the root cause of my sickness was, you know? And so kind of, it, you know, I went from raw carnivore diet pretty much straight to a raw vegan diet, not overnight, but mentally it was pretty much overnight when I, when I discovered raw food. And so, you know, the last kind of like couple of days of, of my journey before raw food was, uh, I was puking every day for months and months, you know, I was completely bedridden. By that time I had developed so many health issues. I even developed this thing called hypogonadism, which I don't really share too much about. I don't know why, but it's, it's basically when your testicles shrink wow. and you stop, you stop producing sperm, your testosterone drops like crazy and it really affects your hormones. And so I was, my sleep was all crazy. I started developing prediabetes, chronic fatigue syndrome, and just my, my it was just so bad. And so I went to the hospital. I swallowed this little tiny pill camera called a, a capsule endoscopy to see what was going on with my gut. I hadn't really technically been diagnosed with Crohn's. I had C- I had been diagnosed, but diagnosed with SIBO, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Mm-hmm. And then, so I swallowed this little camera and it went, it took, it's supposed to take a picture going through your intestines the whole way, like every second. And unfortunately for me, it got stuck like in the middle of my intestines and it got stuck for four months, which oh, I think that's I what people you know, do. They I, swallow the camera. People swallow the camera for those. That's what they do. Yeah, it's like this little tiny pill and it takes a picture of your intestines um, and hopefully seeing what's going on. But if you have Crohn's or severe inflammation, it's like a pretty damn big pill. It's like a horse tranquilizer, you know? Yeah. And so, so this, this thing got stuck in me. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person that it's been stuck in for that long that I know of. I've tried to look at it. I was thinking about like doing a Guinness Book of World Records, seeing how long I have a camera stuck inside my body for, but I was battling with my health insurance to get it taken out without surgery. So there's a procedure that you can use to take it out using balloons to go through the mouth. And so finally, after battles with my insurance, they they took it out. And that that like time in the hospital, I discovered I had Crohn's. And so during that evening of kind of like, okay, well, I have two options of getting my intestines cut out because they're just mangled looking like a battlefield, or I can go on immune suppressing drugs. And those were the only two options. And I, and I, I was like 32 at the time, 31. And I was like, dude, this can't be my, this can't be the end of my life. You know, I'm, I'm like so young at heart. My career's just starting. I, I had just like picked up some big jobs and I was like, man, what, like what happened, you know? 
And so I was so anti-vegan at the time. I don't know why I really was. It just didn't seem natural. And so I did the one thing that I hadn't really done, which was like start to look into plant-based diets and look into plant-based healing. Because every diet that I had really been doing was like focused on fiber being really irritative to the gut. And so I, I just Googled plant-based disease healing. And the first thing really that popped up was like the Gerson therapy and uh, the documentary Super Juice Me. And so I started digging in that and I stayed up all night till six in the morning I learned, you know, Lauren Lockman, Doug Graham, juice feasting, water fasting, fruitarian diet, John Rose. I learned all of that within like six hours. So it made absolute 1000% crystal clear. I know exactly what to do now. You know, a lot of people have that. Some people it takes longer. But when I really discovered the juicing video, Super Juice Me and Fat Sick and Nearly Dead, it was like, boom, I, I completely get it. And so in that moment, I really became a raw vegan for the, for life overnight. You know, wow. it just made, it was like a lightning bolt hit my soul. It made so much sense, so much clarity, even though I was like intoxicated from being chronically sick, it was like, holy shit, this is my future. I know exactly what to do to dig myself out of this hole. And it might take 10 years, but I know exactly what to do now. Yeah. And so, so I went, I went home and got a juicer the, the next morning and started swinging cucumbers and carrots and apples and, and kind of the rest is history, you know? Wow. Crazy. So yeah. what happened? Did you notice like, like for me, like it made so much sense. Like you just said, like a lightning bolt hill hit when I first started reading about raw foods, it was like August 31st, 2016. I was like, this is nuts. How this seems like it, like, how have I never thought about this? And then when I went raw, I felt better than I'd ever felt in my whole life. Like I just woke up. I didn't know that you could feel so good alive. I literally felt totally different than I'd ever felt in like my true self, my higher self. And so happy, like a feeling I'd always been searching for through alcohol and other things. So was that the case for you? Like, did it made sense to you like lightning bolt, but did it have like the positive effect? Like you did it have like, boom, wow, it's crazy. It's having like, I feel so good or no. Immediately. No, because m unlike most people, ev like my entire body was broken. True. I was so chronically sick and my gut wouldn't digest water. So what I did was I, I started juicing and within two weeks, I did notice results, major results, not with my gut. My gut didn't change at all. But I, I started noticing my brain fog going away. And for me, I, I felt like I, my brain was in jail for like three or four years. and so. I started being able to like talk and have clearer thoughts and hold, hold conversations with my girlfriend at the time. And I was like, holy shit, this is like working. And I knew just from now I was like two weeks into researching 24 hours a day, pretty much. Yeah. I was like, okay, okay. My case is severe because of my intestines. And so I knew that I was going to have a long journey just to heal my gut, you know, yeah. to heal a micro microbe imbalance might take way less time, but I'm, I was dealing with structural imbalance, like scar tissue buildup, you know, which a lot of people can't even heal and they will need to get that part of their intestines removed. It just wow. won't heal. And so, so in I your was... opinion, like, what do you think caused all the problems? Do you think it was like specific foods, the processed foods? Like, what do you think really caused all of the problems? Well, yeah, I mean, like a severe cancer, my genes dictated where the inflammation would be in my body you know, which would be in my intestines. And so it was highly processed, a lot of candy and a lot of meat. And mm -hmm. so that stuff is just like, for one, the candy is like poison. And then the meat just takes so long to digest, which my intestines were broken where most people develop colon cancer in the bottom three quarters of the small intestine. Wow. And so, I mean, I was like three to four meals of meat a day mixed with, you know, bread, pasta, all that shit and potato chips and and drugs too, lots of drugs in my journey. And so for me, I was like, I might have to get my intestines cut out to really be, even be able to like, to heal, you know? And I was just like, you know, I will come to that at the last resort. I'm going to try to do this as naturally as possible. And it yeah. wasn't until I, I did my second long water fast that I was like, oh, I think I might not need surgery. And so even through all the juice cleansing I did, I was healing majorly. And my life was coming back and, uh, where it really started noticing differences was three months into raw food. I was doing like mostly raw food, a lot of juice. And then the Garrison therapy kind of diet, like oatmeal and cooked, cooked vegan food. I did that for like the first three months of my journey. And then I was like, 
nothing's working. I'm, I have to do a solid food vacation. You know, John Rose was just like screaming at me on camera. <laughs> you know, <John laughs> Rose, uh, <laughs> and so I, I basically was like, I'm going to take three months and do 90 days on juice and see what happens. And it completely changed my life. You know, it, it didn't heal my intestines, but it healed a lot of other things. I started seeing major amounts of parasites and worms coming out of me and my, my blood sugar started getting better, which it took almost two and a half months for my blood sugar to really start improving. And I was having to drink like eight to 16 ounces, like at least every 50 minutes. Otherwise I would go from the highs to extreme lows, you know, wow. which obviously juicing, if you don't have a good pancreas, it's going to give you a pretty big blood sugar spike, but true, mine was extreme. And so by the end of that three months of juicing, I was like starting to feel pretty freaking good. I, I was definitely functional again. I wasn't no, I was no longer bedridden, but my gut was still majorly screwed up. You know, I was still not digest. I was still throwing up every, every once in a while. And then after three months, I started doing just fruitarian and, and simple fruit, like watermelon, a cantaloupe and persimmons for like three or four months. And then, then I started seeing improvements. I was like, wow, I'm, I'm digesting food again for the first time in fuck, like five years. Wow. And so for me, for me, it was, I mean, it was a miracle. I was so happy at the same time. I was still very sick, but in other ways I was like, wow, I'm functional again. I can go out and do things. You know, I was starting to surf a little bit again. And, and, and then it was, you know, kind of just like four years of being raw and doing tons of juice cleanses and trying mono fruit diets, you know, month on grapes, month on grape juice, lots of herbs and, and uh, very long juice cleanses. Like every three or four months I do a month on juice just because I felt like my intestines needed a break from food and fiber and and they did. Yeah, it's a great break. And it's almost like it's pre-digested for you. You know what I mean? It's like, and it just invigorates your cells. Crazy. What a transformation. And look at you now. Like you look so healthy and I follow you on Instagram. I see all your reels. They're so nicely done. You look so vibrant, healthy. You look amazing. So it's crazy. Like it's taken patience, right? You've had patience. Cause it's like you said, it wasn't right away. I think a lot of people think things should work right away or this doesn't work. So what kept you going? Like, were there ever times where you thought like, Oh, this isn't working. I should give up on these lifestyles, the juicing or this or that. Cause it's taking too much time. Or were you just like, I have to do this. I know this is the way. So that's, that's an amazing question. I personally never, ever questioned my journey at all. I was never like, Oh, I'm doing things wrong ever. I was crystal clear on the information. It made perfect sense. You know, the steps to get back to health, I always understood them. So it was like, okay, if it's not working, do this. If that doesn't work, do this. And I've never been the type that was really like, oh, I'm going to stop and do something else. It was just like, there's no challenge that is ever too much. That's kind of just how my lifestyle has been. It was like, oh, my car breaks down. Cool. Go get it fixed. I hike up a mountain. I fall down and cool. Climb back up it. You know, it was never just mm -hmm. like, Oh, I'm going to stop and try something different. It was like, I know exactly what to do. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It mm -hmm. might take 20 years. I know exactly what to do. I under I really understood what detoxification meant. Yeah. And so I, I, I reached a peak in my healing journey, which I, I'd say I went from like 2% health when I started to like 65% health around year four. Wow. And then I was, I was really skinny. And so I lost a lot of weight for one, because I was doing a lot of juicing and for two, because I broke my legs severely riding a bike in, in San Diego. And so that really put me back because I was inactive for probably six years. And so my gut just wasn't really healing. I just felt like my digestion had reached a peak and I wasn't gaining weight. And so I, I decided to start water fasting. I knew that I knew that I needed to do water fasting. And like my severe, my severity of my symptoms needed probably five to 10 long water fasts. You know, any person who's like a legend that, that, that we follow pretty much who's been doing it for 30, 40 years, most of them have in common that they've done long water fast, you know? Mm. And so I, I knew, I knew that would be in my cards. And at the time, me and my, my girlfriend were going through some pretty brutal things in our relationship. And so I decided I just need a break from life. And my, my soul just needed to go peace, peace out and just hibernate for a while. And so I was very skinny when I started my first water fast. And by the time I finished it, broke it, I was 112 pounds. I was like, concentration camp style, like really wow. thin. Yeah. But, but I saw just miraculous beauty happen to me. And so many, many people don't understand that yeah. um, you might have to do a long water fast to really even, even get eat closer to, to being healthy or getting rid of your chronic health conditions. And so 
Wow. So you would During- say that's been a big, you would say that's been a, like a big thing in your journey, the water fasting, like without the water fasting, you don't think you'd reach the, reach these levels of healing. Never, never would have happened. I would have been struggling for the rest of my life. Probably, you know, people don't really understand how dehydrated they are until they do a water fast. Mm-hmm. And most people don't realize how much old waste they have in their intestines until they do a water fast. And you might think that you're very healthy until you do a two or three week water fast. And it just, it really proves how sick even raw food people are, just how much waste we've accumulated. And so I released probably eight pounds of mucoid plaque after my first water fast. What came out of me was like a, br- a serpent brick. Wow. It was, it was gnarly and disgusting. And one of the worst nights of my life, the day before I released this, this thing, And then after that, I felt like I had been reborn. Just so many different things in my body healed. You know, I was very thin and I loved it. Not the fact that I was thin, but just that like I had gone through this brutal battle to get me here. And I knew that I would gain the weight back eventually. And it took me six months to even gain a pound of weight back. But then my my digestion started to like center. It started to come into alignment. And mm-hmm. I started to gain weight back and I, the mental clarity, my skin was like absolutely perfect. My, my digestion was just light years better. And uh, I felt like I was just reborn. And so I've done three water fast since then, and I still have some more to do, but compared to when I started, I'm like a super healthy person, you know? Wow. Yeah. That's one thing I've never done. I'm so interested in doing it. I think when my kids are a little bit older, cause I think I want to go somewhere to do it. Did you go somewhere to do them or did you just do them yourself? Yeah, my first, well, I've done a lot of five day fasts, like early in the first four years, but I was kind of scared to do over five days. So the first two long ones I did were with Lauren and t- at Tanglewood. Yeah. And so, you know, it was for me, it was mostly just about the environment. Like I needed to be away from my phone, away from a computer, uh, surrounding by people that are like going through hell. And it really, really helped a lot doing that. And and my third fast that I just recently did here in Bali, I, I organized like uh, six of my friends to fast here in Bali with me. And we rented a house for like 40 days. And I I think some of the people went 21 days and some went eight, 18. I went 14. Wow. Um, so it's, it's just like, I, I've still been thin. You know, I'm, I'm still maybe 10 pounds lighter than my my goal weight mm-hmm. um, because my my gut isn't perfect. It, it's, it's, it's getting close to perfect, but water fasting is it's very difficult you know it's i mean juicing is fasting and a lot of people i know you just released a book i saw that you put it out there like juicing actually has nothing to do with fasting yeah it's eating it's it's a complete meal no yeah even my book title it's how to juice cleanse not fast like you know and i like juice feasting like i get it it's not a total fast like water fasting is and i just want to say quick about water fasting i personally think just like disclaimer i think you should do your research and i think they should be supervised if you're going to do a water fast like go somewhere and be careful you guys i'm not saying like go start a water fast right now at home for like 40 days no like i think you should do your research go to one of those places like jeff did to tanglewood or wherever and be supervised do it safe be careful because you do hear of things happening so yeah what were we just saying what did i interrupt you on oh the fasting versus like versus you know, not fasting with things with juicing. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've seen like being, I would say I'm like a a juicing. Now I'm like a water fasting and juicing dude. I've seen so many people who have come through the water fasting scene who were raw vegan for 10 years, you know, hundreds and maybe even a thousand days juicing, not getting anywhere because you're not fasting. It's not fasting. You know, you're not forcing your body to rehydrate and eliminate this old hard material. Mm-hmm. And so when you really go past like seven to 10 days, then you really start getting in to the real detoxification. And most people going raw will have tons of benefits and going on a juice cleanse will have so many benefits. And I would say this for almost every single person who thinks they're a 10 to 20 year healthy raw vegan. I will almost guarantee you if you do a 20 to 30 day water fast, your health will be dramatically increased afterwards. And you'll probably detox while you're fasting because fasting is not supposed to be a difficult thing to do. It should feel okay. What is difficult and what does suck about fasting is detoxing. You mm-hmm. know, when you detox, it's when you feel like crap, not mm-hmm. fasting. You know, fasting is a very smooth and beautiful process. Most people of a normal weight have at least three to four weeks of reserves on their body where they're totally fine and you should feel okay. You mm-hmm. should have plenty of energy. 
Mm-hmm. And yeah. So. Speaking of the crap, I know you said you got out like eight pounds. I believe it. Even when I go for a colonic, I'm just like, not the mucoid plaque at a colonic when I'm not cleansing and just eating raw, but so much comes out. Like it's absolutely crazy. I've never like had, I had a little bit of mucoid plaque, I think come out on one of my juice fasts, but not like that with like that euphoric feeling you said, but you hear that happening to people and it's just life changing. It's just crazy how much can be backed up inside of us. And I think that's where so many of the problems stem from. It's like even Lou Corona, I talked to him a lot and just interviewed him for a quick interview. And he said, yeah. when I asked, where do you think all the problems start nowadays? He's, he's like, people aren't digesting properly, right? They're so toxic from the food and the environment, this and that. And so would you say now you're feeling good, really good compared to back then? And when, how long has it been since your journey started? Yeah, I've been, I've, I've been raw for six years now, coming up on six years. And I would say I'm in great health. I still have toxicity in my body. When I fast, I still feel like crap. You know, my last fast I did was much easier than my first. My first fast was my blood sugar dropped into the low twenties for 11 days, which if you were to go to a hospital, they'd be like, you're probably going to die. You need to start drinking some soda or put some sugar in your blood. And so that during that 11 days, I really healed my pancreas. I feel like, and got completely rid of my pre-diabetes. But even after that fast, I, I could barely walk for the whole, during the whole water fast. I was brutally intoxicated. And my second fast was a lot different. It was much easier in some ways. My third fast, even easier. I healed so many. Each fast I do is like just a complete bump up in the percentage of health that I have. Wow. And so compared to somebody, if I'm comparing myself to somebody like DTM or John Rose or or Lou or somebody like that, those guys are probably at like 95% health if they're staying active, Mm -hmm. I'd say I'm probably 80 to 85. And so to me, that's massive. I'm still, I feel great. I have tons of energy. I go surfing every day. I go to the gym now every day and I feel like a normal ass person, you know, which is amazing for being huge. It's huge. It's huge. I feel like I'm healthy, but I know that I still have more to do. And I, I, I will be doing another water fast coming up and I'll probably need at least a couple more water fasts. Yeah. And then, uh, then, then it will be more of a focus on like kind of rebuilding and gaining more muscle, you know, which I, I do yeah. in between the water fast, but you know, when you, when you fast every six months, all the progress you made over that six months is just gone, you know? So, yeah. And it's a journey. I feel like, I feel like some people might think like they see us fasting or doing things on this lifestyle, the raw foods, they think, oh, it's restrictive. It's crazy. It's an eating disorder diet. But when you're eating such garbage for like three decades, right. For like 30 years or whatever, it's you're really like I feel like smart about it you know like it's gonna take time to heal right it takes time and I think that's what a lot of people don't see and if they see like negative effects within the first few years or whatever they think oh look at this vegan diet like it's not working you know yeah a lot of people really don't understand how long it takes to really heal and Mm -hmm. that's why a lot of people will see skinny vegans and be like oh the vegans are weak (laughs) Yeah. Meat. And, and it's like you guys, most people get into raw food because they were sick. Yeah, I know. And you do, you will lose some weight when you first go raw. It's like pretty damn normal. Mm-hmm. And to, to have an extremely impacted gut is going to take some time to heal. So a lot of people will get turned off because they didn't completely heal themselves in like two years on juice cleanses or raw food. And it's like, you know, juice cleansing and raw food is like, it's like the lowest level of detoxification. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like just beginning. Like Mm -hmm. water fasting is, it's like been around forever. Everyone who's been a guru is like the true way to heal yourself is with water. You know, it's Mm -hmm. with resting in water. Most of uh, the the legends that we have learned from talk about this. Probably not enough because it's it's like kind of an unpopular topic. True. And uh, people think it's too extreme, but it's in my opinion, it's the least extreme because it's the most effective. Mm -hmm. You know, like why spend 20 years trying to eat gourmet salads to heal your gut? When yeah. you could do two, two or three like water fast and then it's gone. Yeah. You know? And so, so for me, I, I've been kind of like persecuted on the internet the past like four years just because just because I've been skinny and and like eating fruit and and doing a lot of juice. And you're like, oh, you have an eating disorder. It's like you don't have any clue what my, my gut looks like. So yeah, I eat, I eat plenty of food. I'm just chronically sick, yo. So yeah. give it time. I know the journey, you know, like you've, you've been doing it for what, seven years, eight Almost years seven now? years. Yeah. September will be seven okay. years. Okay. Yeah. Sick. So, so I mean, 16. it's a journey, right? Yeah. It's a journey. Yeah. It's a journey. And it's not the answer to, every, to everything. You know what I mean? It totally transformed my life. And it, it's like, I'm my best self 
living this lifestyle hundred percent. Like I've tried other ways before. It's not for me, but it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's changed my life like nothing else. And so do you notice any difference too with fats? I was going to ask you when you are eating raw foods and you're not fasting, do you notice differences in how you feel with the overt fats when you keep them lower or higher? Or is it just kind of you eat however? Yeah, of course. So I, so before I started water fasting, that was one of the big reasons why I was, was wanting to do a fast because for one, my gut was still like getting bloated, mostly if I'd be eating like fats. So mm -hmm. avocado, coconut meat, I, I discovered durian pretty early on. So I was eating, eating durian and all this stuff would just blow me up. Mm -hmm. And so at, after each fast I did, my ability to digest fats increased dramatically. So I'll, I'll give you a little experiment that I've been doing six years ago. I had a, a strawberry peanut butter smoothie that my, that I had like three sips of from my ex-girlfriend and I was pretty much like bedridden for five days because of it. I, the peanut butter just destroyed me after my, and after my first fast, I was able to like start doing pretty damn good with avocados. Mm -hmm. If I would do more than like three or four avocados a week, my, my forehead skin and my back would kind of start to break out with acne, mm -hmm. um, not acne, but just pimples. After my second fast, it was, I could do like an avocado every night. And I was starting to be able to do some nuts and seeds and dressings. And then after this recent fast that I just did before this recent fast, if I were to eat a handful of just nuts, yeah, I would probably be in the hospital, you know, and I've done several experiments over the past few months where I can eat two handfuls of like almonds and totally fine, you wow. know, so each, each cleanse I've done or each fast I've done, I've been able to tolerate digestively, but then also what it does with, with my blood and the effects of that. And mm -hmm. I feel pretty damn good eating fats now, you know, I, I I'm still mostly low fat with the exception of durian. I do eat a lot of durian here living in Bali. Yeah. And so I, I would say I'm in between eight and 15% fat throughout the week. You yeah. Know, dep depending on my level of the ability to get fresh durian really. And That's so good though. We, that makes sense. We, also have, we have really crappy avocados here in Bali for the most part. So I don't really eat yeah. those too much anymore, which, which is kind of good because I find avocados to be very oily. You yeah. Know, and there's such, such concentrated fats that um, even the healthiest of people, if you eat too many avocados, you will feel a bit more tired. I think. Yeah, you know? I think so for sure. For most people, for me, for sure. Yeah. And in yeah. Bali, like, so you're from the U S originally, right? Yeah, I'm from, I'm from Missouri and I lived wow. in Colorado for a long time. And then I moved to Mexico from San Diego and then Mexico, I lived in like Playa del Carmen, Tulum area for two years. And then, yeah. Uh, and then Bali, yeah, you then... feel happier in Bali than you did like living in the U S you like the lifestyle. Of like a million percent better. It's cheaper. The fruit is way better. I I pretty much never wear a shirt. You know, I go to the beach almost every single day and go either swimming or surfing. So it's just such a much more like laid back lifestyle. And if if you're gonna be a like raw food is is mm -hmm. amazing, but if you're gonna be a fruitarian, it's so much easier in the tropics. Like yeah, so much easier. You know, dragon fruit, papaya, mangoes. It's just like stuff just grows like weeds. Yeah. And so which for somebody who's really i'm not looking to be a raw vegan i'm looking to be i believe that the healthiest diet is the simplest fruit-based diet and i know there are some you know longer term raw vegans that will really disagree with the amount of fruit that i eat but in my opinion there's nothing that mag makes more sense than eating fruit you know I, yeah. I, nothing makes sense about eating greens or vegetables it just doesn't make sense to me i love and my so, fruit too uh, I, yeah i just interviewed brian clement in miami for, at the hippocrates institute you know and yeah. he's like, yeah, yeah. they're like no fruit there. Right. I find it interesting to learn, like to listen and learn what different people do though. I'm like totally open-minded, obviously like that, but I love my fruit and he literally never has fruit ever. I yeah. asked him never, ever. Yeah. 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 That's so bizarre to me because my whole entire world and mentality is centered around what would I do if I was living in the wild? Mm -hmm. You know, humans are not designed to live in a house wearing clothes no. or eating, even eating salad. What other species on the planet eats a freaking salad? <laughs> it's so it's abnormal, Yeah, you know? So like the only thing that we would really probably be eating if we were just like living in the tropics where we would only survive naked would really be fruit and like berries and, and stuff that was ripe that we could see that we could pick. We mm -hmm. would never be attracted to onions or garlics or potatoes or, or probably not even carrots or beets. Um, and most likely most greens, we wouldn't be attracted to the soft ones. We would, 
you know, but that's about it. And so for me, it's just like that, like, why, why do we have to overcomplicate health so much to be like, we need microgreens and sprouts and cooked vegetables and cooked soups and highly processed salads and mm -hmm. nut butter dressing, which I love. I love a, a good cashew dressing every once in a while, but it's yeah. like, I get that's it. still not very natural. I get you know? it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, if someone was asking you, cause you've been doing this for six years and you live it like pretty natural. If someone was to ask you like, Jeff, how could I get started? How should I get started? I want to start. Like, this is probably the most, the biggest thing I hear on the channel, how to start, how am I going to start and subscribe you guys? Cause I have like a big video coming for that in a couple months. But if somebody was asking you, what advice would you give somebody for like how to get started on this with all the experience yeah, I mean and knowledge you have, right? Like start eating fruit. I mean, it's it's pretty, it's as simple as if you switch all of your meals with just fruit meals, you're going to be a completely different person. Most people don't really even know what that means to just eat fruit, but it's like go walk into your freaking grocery store and what looks delicious to you. Eat mm -hmm. that for breakfast. Start with breakfast. Just replace breakfast. If you don't have a juicer or a blender, just eat a bag of strawberries. Eat five apples. Eat a eat five or six bananas, eat a bunch of oranges until you're full mm -hmm. and just start doing that. And then, I mean, I'm into the daily juicing habit for the majority of people who aren't willing to really go super deep. So start drinking a daily green juice, having orange juice for breakfast or lunch. And then, uh, you know, if you don't want to go vegan, that's totally fine, but try to eat as mostly whole food, plant-based and high fruit as you can. And mm -hmm. once you switch to carbohydrates compared to like proteins or fats, even if they're plant-based fats, you're going to see dramatic results in, in your energy usually happens first and then in, in all the other areas of your body. And so if you can get onto a mostly plant-based carbohydrate diet, you know, like the, like the McDougal diet or the starch-based diet, the starch solution, mm -hmm. you're going to see massive increases in your health. And so, you know, a lot of people that really inspired me early on were not even raw, raw foodists. It was like, the Garrison therapy, Charlotte Garrison and John McDougal and Me too, yeah. um, Dr. Greger and, and a lot of just the, the starch based carbohydrate based doctors, you know, just mm -hmm. once you can wrap your head around carbs and it, it becomes easier to really understand fruit because it's like, well, if carbs are so beneficial, why would we complex carbs? Why would we cook them? Yeah. Then it's just like, oh, okay, well, potatoes are super unnatural. You know, that's gross. I would never eat a raw potato. Yeah. And so, you know doing a lot of deep dive into John Rose, it's like kind of the fall of humanity really started happening when, when we started cooking food, mm -hmm. when we started migrating out of the tropics. And so what can you eat that tastes delicious? That's raw. It's yeah. really only fruit. That's it. Fruit is the only food that's really that attractive to us. You know, I, I would never choose carrots over mangoes ever. True. Good point. I wouldn't, you know, like, like yeah. at this stage, I do like eating carrots every once in a while in a salad, mm -hmm. but that's because I, I'm still addicted to, to food kind of, you know, mm -hmm. even being six years on raw food and five years before that changing my diet, you know, 25 plus years of just being heavily addicted to just crunch and just diverseness when I'm eating a meal, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to take some time to really become like totally content with never having a carrot or like a salad. You know? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm never going to eat salads ever, but I, I typically don't eat that much salad and I don't really eat vegetables and I don't think they make sense to me. And that's what it comes down to. Like just break it and down. You never bro. crave like, them. I love, I do like fruit mono fruit cleanses and stuff like that, where like, I'll just eat fruit, like watermelons for 21 days or like something. I like it for fun. Like a, a lot of it, a lot of calories, but <laughs> then I really crave my greens. You don't find your craving greens a lot. So I do, I, I crave greens, but I don't ever crave vegetables per se. Greens are yeah. herbs, you know, yeah. lettuce is a True. herb. It's a very, it's a very mild herb. So I do eat a lot of lettuce mm -hmm. right now. I'm probably only doing like two days a week where I have lettuce now, but for the past two and a half years, I've been doing lettuce, like almost every day. Um, so how do you eat your lettuce? Like, like other than in juices, I just eat it, I just eat it plain. I'll yeah, eat cool. it with, with fruit. So I'll eat pineapple with lettuce. Usually the first two or three meals I have is just fruit or coconut water or a juice. And then for dinner, I'll have like papaya with lettuce. See, I like this. Head. This is like Tanny yeah. Raw style, right? Like Tanny Raw does yeah. like the greens with the fruit. And this is one thing I never tried. I got to try it. People say it's really satisfying yeah. when you do them both together like that. Yeah. I mean, you, I think you said you just did a week on watermelon. Yeah. I just so, did five days. Mm -hmm. So you're probably pretty excited just to eat like a cucumber, you know, like yeah. just watermelon. Yeah. So try <laughs> eating pineapple or like mangoes or oranges with lettuce. Yeah. Just have some lettuce and 
eat it like as a separate thing, just munch on it. For me, it took four and a half years to get to the point where I could just enjoy the taste of lettuce or just eating a bell pepper. Mm -hmm. um, but now I love it and I don't need the complex salads anymore or dressings really. And so for me, my vegetables are cucumber, tomato, avocado, red bell pepper. Those to me are like fruit vegetables. And I do eat those like maybe one or two days a week. Yeah. Most, and you, most, most of fruit though. Do you ever eat cooked food? Do you ever have like cheat no. meals? And if you have like, how does no. it make you feel? Never. That's good. So twice in the past six years, I've, I've done experiments. The first time was like after six months of being raw, my, my ex-girlfriend made sweet, cooked sweet potato and onion. And I took like three bites and I was like, I don't even care. It just didn't excite me. And, and I felt tired within like 10 minutes of eating probably yeah. four bites. That's the thing. It's not worth and, it. Yeah. And then recently I, so one of the people that fasted with me ended up having some, some rough issues refeeding. And so one night we made her some like cooked soup and some broth, some vegetable broth, just to see if, if she would tolerate that better. And I, I ate some of the like, uh, what did we have? Carrot, tomato and potato. And for the first time in almost my entire journey, the smell of it was like, whoa, like this smells delicious. And so yeah. I, I ate some and, and I, I didn't feel good. It honestly just didn't excite me. And so I was like, okay, that, that's it. I've never really had cravings for cooked food though, mm -hmm. which is I think unlike a lot of other people where they crave a lot of cooked food and it's hard for them. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was just so sick that it just like, it, the fruitarian diet just made so much sense. I watched a ton of videos of people eating fruit on the internet. And so it was just like, okay, I kind of programmed myself like this is my food. And mm -hmm. being so restrictive on juicing, I was just so stoked to eat just like fruit. So- um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll ever need cooked food again. It doesn't like excite me. So. No, me too. Hey, I, do, you? You, you eat cooked food I don't eat well? cooked food. I no. barely ever, like maybe once or twice a year, max, if that, the last time I ate it was not my most recent trip to Miami, but the time before. And then the time before that eating it, I can't even remember what it was, but I ate a cooked meal at a vegan festival. This must have been like six months ago. I can't remember. And it was like insane how I felt. I felt like my brain stopped functioning as good. Literally, it felt like it was like slower. It wasn't working as good. I'm not saying that your brain's like that. You guys have <laughs> eat cooked food, but this is how it was for me. And I noticed it. Things were just slower. Like they slowed down a bit. And I don't like that. I like to be like crystal clear. And I was so tired. And I felt like I was hung over the next day. And I, you know, when you feel so thirsty, I needed so much water. And this was like a healthy cooked food meal. So it's not for me. It's just not That's for exactly me. what I felt when after this, this cooked food I had a few months ago. Well, I woke up kind of hung over and dehydrated. It's like, why would I yeah. ever do that again? Yeah. yeah. And what would you say is like the biggest thing you've learned in this whole health journey you've had? Just be patient with yourself. You know, like we're coming from not even our own life, but generations before of, of toxicity and, and incredibly wrong living habits, not just through diet, just every single freaking thing we're doing is just completely backwards from nature. And so just be patient with your journey and just try to make slow, progressive changes instead of just you know, you don't have to become a fruitarian overnight. You don't have to go into a hundred day juice cleanse. If mm -hmm. you got chronic sickness, I would definitely recommend doing that. But if you're just like mildly sick or just want to get healthier, then just start eating fruit, get it, get into some juicing, get into some smoothies, you know, just start getting the real food that looks alive. That's colorful. That isn't cooked and processed and just start putting it in your body. And, you know, with, within a few months, most people not even going vegan, We'll start to see benefits just from starting to eat more fruit and juicing and stuff. So, so true. Just starting eating more food, real food. I mean, yeah. 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 And where do you think you'd be right now if, if you didn't find this path? Like if you didn't start the raw, the juicing, like this natural path? I mean, I'd, I'd probably be where my, Matt Monarch is. I'd probably be doing, having, having intestinal surgery, being on, you know, like prednisone and the, the immune suppressing drugs with my intestines cut out. You know, like I, I was, I wasn't really going to surrender to the knife at that point without doing at least a few water fasts, but I didn't really understand what was possible until I started doing it and seeing the changes. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately for, for somebody like him, I loved him and I still do. I think he's, he's great. Yeah. It's, just, it's just unfortunate that a lot of people don't try water fasting as a last resort. Mm -hmm. you know, like it's, it's, to me, it should be the first root thing that people try, but it, it's, Somebody going off for 30 days without eating food seems crazy, but you know, I would probably be in the hospital and very severely sick, maybe not even with intestines at all. Yeah. You know? That's so crazy. I'm Thank really, God you um, didn't have that surgery. Eh? Yeah, I know. And honestly, up until this recent water fast, I thought that maybe I would need to have 
some small amount of my intestines taken out because scar tissue doesn't heal always. Mm -hmm. you wow. know? Like if you have a, like an injury, like a, a blown out knee or a severe scar or burn, most likely that's not going to heal all the way. So the same thing happens when you develop severe Crohn's or intestinal inflammation, the inflammation turns into scar tissue. Wow. And so the, the, the shape of my intestines was like, there was nothing going through my, the hole in my intestines. It was just so, it, it was so narrow that even until this last water fast, I was having like some, some digestive issues, especially with fats or too much salad. And now I'm just like, dude, I digest so well. I think the scar tissue is like either almost gone or it's, it's getting close to being completely gone. Amazing. And, wow. Um, so yeah, you know, juicing and, and water fasting has drastically changed my life, you know? Yeah. Wow. I'm so glad. And yeah, Jeff juices. So what's your favorite juice? I have to know. <laughs> Valencia orange juice. It's so basic. Oh. I lived in California. Yeah. You know, like I, you don't need complex juice recipes. I like pineapple juice, but California local ripe seasonal Valencia orange juice is just yeah. mind blowing. I don't know. You've, you, you've probably had some I've had it. juices. It's so yeah. good. I love my current favorite. Well, my current favorite is actually cantaloupe juice. So many people I interview say you have to try cantaloupe juice. And I never tried it. Cause I just never thought, Oh, it couldn't be that good. It's freaking, you've probably <laughs> had it. It's so good when it's like cold cantaloupe. It's so good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That... For me, it's, it, I, I do love cantaloupe. I love almost every, I love every juice. You can give me like, you know, jalapeno and cucumber juice. I'll be like, oh, I love it. But what could I drink every day with, without ever getting sick of it? It's the only thing is really orange juice. Yeah. You know, sugar cane juice and pineapple juice. I can kind of get tired of it, you know, after a, a lot of it, but I mean, everyone has access to oranges and if they're ripe, they're so smooth, you know? Yeah. They're Not good. Like and for a juicer, you use the Nama. We both use the Nama, the best juicer in the game. So I'll put both of our codes down below. Go support one of us if you're going to get a Nama. It's the freaking best, you guys. You can save 55 bucks and it's freaking amazing. Yep, it's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want to ask you some viewer questions. They have a bunch of questions for you. So I'll pick a couple and ask you if you have a little bit more time. Yeah, plenty of time. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let me see. Everybody loves you. Like I said, question for Jeff. Do you believe all diseases could be healed through diet? Absolutely not. I believe most of the chronic illnesses can't be healed with just changing your diet. You're going to have to go way deeper. You know, I've, I've, I've seen so many people now that tried diet and it didn't work. I've seen so many people that tried juicing and it didn't work. So if wow. you have mild health issues, just going raw will be majorly beneficial. Even just going like simple fruit for even more chronic illness is going to be majorly beneficial. But I would say there's at least 35% of the people that I see they need to go way deeper than just food so uh, unfortunately no that's a good no. point and everybody's so different right and i think like stress and environment maybe being in the wrong relationship and things like that can really affect us too even if like we're eating clean if we're in the wrong job not following our purpose have a lot of stress i think that can hurt our, us a lot don't you majorly for sure sleep is probably more important than diet yeah you know if you're not sleeping you could sleep 10 hours a day and eat fast food and recover from it. But if you're eating raw food and never sleep, you're going to be highly impacted. That's you a know? fact. So, yeah. I think so, sleep, it's the most underrated thing. And you know, when you sleep, it cleanses your brain from like all the stimulation and everything from the day before, I, th I think almost like cleansing a plaque. Right. And if you're not getting sleep, it builds up and your stress builds up and it's like really, really bad. Okay. The next yeah. question, what is the best way to overcome junk food cravings? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty into the solid food vacations, you know, mm -hmm it forces you to be present with yourself. It's, it's a form of like meditation to a sense with your eating habits. And so you could either ignore them or you could like take them head on, which meditation is dealing with life. And so just like you've done some, some long juice feasts for me, they, they've been crucial and monumental for the people that I, I see in, in my business and in my coaching. But me personally, I was, I was a crackhead for candy, like a straight up crack addict for any processed food. Like a, you know, every night before I'd go to sleep, I'd have an entire box of cereal, of like the worst, like Captain Crunch or some shit. And so oh, yeah, wow. after, after probably like three to four weeks on juicing, my taste buds changed dramatically. You know, I, inc I released so many parasites and flushed out so many thoughts, which come, come a lot with your, the level of gut health. Uh, but for me, I think it's just eating very simple and you have to really just sit through it. You have to, you have to force your, your, yourself to have the willpower to do it. You know, you yeah. can try to slowly gradually change things, 
But in my opinion, it's it's good to do both, you know, gradually start to shift towards healthier food and then to really overcome like the lifelong addictions. That's where the fasting and, and the juice cleansing like really come in, um, come into play. Because during that time, you're forced to deal with those emotions. And the more you think about that, that food and the more you sit with that food without reacting to it, the stronger you'll be after you get through that little period of pain when you're really craving it, you know? Mm -hmm. So even on my long fast and juice cleanses, I've been sitting there for hours, 10 hours, just dreaming of pizza, you know, just like, oh my God, I got to eat pizza. Yeah. I haven't had food or any, any <laughs> calories in three weeks. Like me a goddamn pizza. I started to notice parasites when I was doing enemas and I never had any idea I had them. Some people will say on social media, there's no way you had them. You would have had symptoms. I had no symptoms. I looked healthy, looked great, felt great. And I started no. doing these enemas and saw these parasites. So did you see them with enemas or colonics or did you just, how did you start seeing them? I, I mean, I saw, it's hard to see them when you do an enema because the water just looks like diarrhea. But when you, I, I started seeing hundreds of parasites coming out before sure. I even touched enema. Yeah. And so when I was, I was probably on like 90% of my diet was juice after month two of, of like doing like the garrison therapy pretty much. I started seeing parasites coming out. Some of them were alive. I'd see parasites that were still moving in the toilet. Oh, and I was wow. Like, That's too much for me. I, was, I didn't see that. Wow. <laughs> I was like seeing them uh, up close. I would pull them out and put them on paper towels and inspect them. And yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then I started doing enemas. I've probably done 2000 enemas in, in my career. Enemas drastically improved my, uh, my constipation levels in the first two years. And mm -hmm. so it, it's really, it's hard to see, see anything in a, in an enema because it's just like brown, you know? Yeah. Um, true. So, true. Good so, point. Yeah. So I didn't really see any in that, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And somebody asked, what are the steps you would recommend somebody with Crohn's disease do in order to heal? Stop eating solid food immediately. You know, like get in, get into eating fruit as quick as you can get your body acclimated to detoxing. So where you're not just straight diarrhea when you eat raw food, but you know, maybe transition for a month and then, then go on juices. If you're not willing to go into water fasting, go on juices for a very long time. You know, imagine mm -hmm. having a cut on your arm. I say this so many times and trying to heal your cut by rubbing it all day, every day, it's never going to heal. You know, it's going to develop scar tissue. So you need to get the fiber out of your diet immediately. And, and even there is even some fiber in juice. And so I would recommend just going on juices. You can live on juice for a very long time you know, like a very long time and see yeah. amazing things happen. Fiber mm -hmm. is incredibly important to our diet long-term, but if you've got an impacted gut, like fiber is the worst thing you could probably put in your gut, you know, any, any solid food, you know, meat will digest smoother per se than fiber. Fiber is very irritative to your gut lining. And so I'm not, I'm not at all telling people to eat meat. It's completely acidic and toxic. Um, and the byproduct after mm -hmm. it's digested is incredibly toxic but as far as functionality like get get off of solid food uh once you can do that the longer you can go without eating solid food and if you can get into you know water fasting then then i would do that juice cleansing and water fasting for crumbs yeah i can't believe you ate raw carnivore like i know i don't understand <laughs> it because i look at it i try to be open-minded and like understand where everybody's coming from but when i look at that like it just repulses me it makes me feel so gross like did you enjoy it? Like you were just like, I'm no. into it. Yeah. No, definitely not. The only thing I enjoyed eating was the raw goat milk, the raw cheese and the honey. That's the only thing I enjoyed. Yeah. And I was sense. eating raw fish. Sometimes I would eat raw chicken. I would eat raw. I would take an egg and just crack it on my tooth and suck the egg out. I would eat raw ground beef, raw steak. And it was just like, it's a very hard to digest chewy thing if it's not like processed or cooked, you know? And so what what made perfect sense after I learned about our digestive tract was that all carnivores eat the animal. They don't just eat the meat from it. They kill it with their, their claws. They mm -hmm. chase it. They hunt it. And they rip it open with their teeth. They eat the fur. They eat the bones, the eyes, the liver, the, the throat. They eat all of the tendons. We don't do any of that because no. it's disgusting. You know, we're not attracted to a, a, a squirrel hanging from our fender on our car. You know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> And did you like feel, it. did you feel different then when you ate that way? Like psychologically wise and stuff too. And like your personality, did you feel like you were different on that diet versus on this diet? Of course. I was yeah. way more aggressive. I was much more aggressive as a person. I, I mean, just being 
doing a lot of juice cleansing and fasting and meditation and stuff, I've really came in touch with my, my own ego um, and been, been a lot more humble, but I was very aggressive there. You know, there's a lot of, I mean, it's, it's just like, it's, it's a brutal process to kill and eat an animal. You know, the negative forces in that being you will inherit through eating its flesh, you know? So there's a lot of cultures that are aggressive because of what they're eating. And a lot of it is because they're eating the adrenaline from a dead animal. And so, so true. So I was all, I also felt like crap eating the raw carnivore diet. It didn't make me feel better, which is why I stopped doing it, you know? So yeah. And at least you try, you try different things, right? We try different things. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. Somebody, I can't remember if I asked you this too. I was going to ask you, did I ask you this? Did you, if you think it was a blessing actually now all the health problems, cause you know, sometimes we're going through a hard time and like, we just get so frustrated. We can't find the answer. And I know it can be so frustrating. And then sometimes like I went through a lot of health problems. And then when I got to the other side, I'm like, oh, thank God I'll let all of it happen because it led me here. And like, I'm glad. Are you glad now or no? With that, yeah, everything 100%. Kind of- I feel like everything happens for a reason. And the, the trajectory of my life before I became sick was probably in a much more toxic path. Probably would have had more fun in many ways. But I was brutally sick, puking every day for hundreds of days, like years. And I needed to go through that that scar tissue to really pay my price for destroying my body. I, I feel like going through sickness is your payback for sinning to your body. You know, what we put this beautiful vessel through, we're going to need to pay the price. We're going to need to go. We're going to need to be sentenced to jail time. And the jail time is the pain and suffering that we have to go through, either by being sick or through the painful process of fasting. When you go through those fasting days and you're crying, and just releasing the inner demons that you've inherited through your own inability to see what what's real in nature, then you start to realize, like, damn, I've really been living wrong. You start to release, you start to surrender, you start to have a lot more love and compassion within your own heart. Mm-hmm. Once you start to realize, like, oh, damn, I I got to pay the price for my consequences. You know, the 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 diet was affecting me. The the way I've been treating people, the way I've been treating the the earth and the other animals. You might think that chicken sandwich is just ch- just the sandwich, but I believe in karma. You know, I believe that thou shall not kill uh, applies to everything, not just humans. And so whether it's payback in this life or the next one, completely happy with becoming so toxically sick for a very long time. And now I'm just way more grounded and humbled. And so I, I, I've been able to open my mind and expand my, my learnings by being sick. And I don't think I ever would have been able to be in this place. Uh, with my friendships, my relationships, and and with the relationship with myself, you know, so I feel like a lot of people say that, but some people are kind of like, you know, like, uh, I wish that it would have never happened to me, but I, I, I think the opposite. I'm glad it did, you know? That's so good. And I was going to say, I was going to ask your relationships. They probably changed so much, right? I'm guessing over the last six years, like the circle of people you had around you six years ago before you started this versus now. I mean, uh, everybody who does this long enough realizes that it's pretty hard to hang out with people that have toxic habits, right? Yeah. Like I, I I don't ever go to a pizza place or go to a bar, never. So that friend circles out, you know, I don't really hang out with them anymore. And so my closest friends still remain. And so, you know, when we hang out, I, we just don't go to bars. You know, I live in Bali, so all of my old friends don't live here. So I've made new friends. Mm-hmm. But, but when I go home to visit, they're still my homies. Mm-hmm. It's just enjoy doing the same things that they do. I do not have fun going out to a bar or going to a barbecue. You know, I I can go to a barbecue and have fun with conversations, but the act of the barbecue isn't super fun for me. So yeah, for for sure. Relationships shift and you start to like focus on people that you can have conversations with that are a little bit more aligned. I feel like the pandemic really changed that for a lot of people and me, me personally, which in many ways sucked because it drew this big divide between you know, red and blue, left and right, healthy and not healthy. And it was, uh, it was kind of a big wake up call, but you know, it's like, what do you want in your life? Surround yourself with people that you want to be like Mm -hmm. and eliminate the people that are toxic to you. And luckily I have friends that I can look past some of their habits and I will be friends forever. But with the the people that I hang out with or associate with daily, it's, it's healthy people, you know, it's what's in my life now. I'm sure it's Mm -hmm. very similar for you, right? Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's changed so much. So my circle, because I I used to go out for wine, pizza every week with the same group of people twice a week. It doesn't it just doesn't work anymore, right? Yeah, it's totally changed. And somebody was asking about your 
mom's fasting results at Tanglewood with Lauren Lockman. She went, did she go for a water fast there? Your mom? Yes. So my mom's got a crazy ass story too. My mom is 73 and she was like obese with tons of health issues. And we kind of lost touch for nearly 10 years and we reconnected because I, I surrendered and I wanted to reach out. So she came to visit me when I lived in Mexico and she went raw and started wow. eating mostly raw for six months, lost like 35 pounds, healed a lot of her health issues. And uh, I convinced her to spend her money to go fast at Tanglewood. And she did 28 days fasting with, with, uh, with Lauren down there. And when she came back, she was a, I mean, a completely different person, like personality, physical, healed pretty much all of her health issues. Total, she's lost almost 80 pounds. Crazy. It's been a year and a half. And she's, she's a raw vegan now. She eats like I do pretty much. And it's, it's crazy because she, she lives in a small town in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, not probably not a single other person that eats raw food down there. Nobody's vegan. And she's, she understands it now. You know, she gets it. She loves it. We talk, you know, once, once every couple of weeks and uh, she's, she's thriving, you know, so water Good fasting and raw food. Like, I mean, she's, she, she's an older woman, you know, she's my mom. In I her seventies. This is a freaking amazing. 70s. It's never too late. That's so amazing. Wow. I love it. Exactly. And pers her personality, like she had a lot of anger and she released a lot of it. And I, I remember the first time I talked to her after her fast, she was just like a totally more compassionate and loving person. And I never saw her smile showing her teeth. And now yeah. Just every time I saw pictures of her, would see her smile. She'd just be like so happy. Just wow. like, she was she was reborn, just like me. You know, we were both reborn after our first fast. I love and it. I Thank God. And if you didn't find this path, path, then she might not have found this path either, right? That's so amazing. I love that. Yeah. That's yeah, so that's great. <laughs> wow. And someone said, I was wondering what are your thoughts on incorporating plant milks made from nuts and seeds, such as raw walnuts on extended juice fast for people who have a lower body fat? That's a good question. A lot of people ask me if they're doing like a long juice fast, what about including some nut milks? What do you think about that? I mean, if your goal is to heal, you know, you don't need nut milks in there. The, the goal isn't to, to increase fat. The goal is to hydrate. Hydration is healing. That's pretty much it. You know, we, we use simple sugars and minerals and stuff to like get our get of our body the basic macro and micronutrient needs but i don't think you need them cravings you might need them with your cravings for sure they can help but i don't think you need to increase your fat intake to gain weight i think you need to eliminate the waste that's in your intestines and heal your malabsorption issues in your gut to gain weight that's what mm -hmm. happens with myself and almost everyone i know is you just got to get the, the plaque out and you got to heal the inflammation. And that doesn't really happen through fat. That happens yeah. through hydration. hydration. And what do you say right? to some people who say like mucoid plaque isn't real? You know, some people come on and they say it's not real. Like it's people make it up. Doctors can't see it inside the colon. Like it's fake. What do you say to that? I'm sorry that you never saw it. I have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know hundreds of people that have. I'm sorry that you haven't. I would say the same thing to people who think that the fruitarian diet doesn't heal. I'm sorry you haven't done the research. I'm sorry you haven't experienced it. I have, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I personally know hundreds of people who have seen and dealt with plaque. Lauren, 10,000 people he's fasted. I would say not everyone sees plaque, definitely not, but you know, 30 years of fasting people, he's seen a lot of plaque just through the two times I've been to Tanglewood, you know, probably each time, 10 people in each session having plaque coming out. You know, mm -hmm. I know for a fact that it exists. I've touched it. I've smelled it. I've seen it. Uh, the first fast was probably in between six and eight pounds. Wow. And it wasn't just, it was not old food because I was doing enemas, you know? So mm -hmm. I know for a fact that it was plaque, you know, and you know, three month old or three week old papaya smells a lot different than 30 year old dehydrated Doritos. Yeah. It's you know? crazy, right? Crazy. Yeah crazy so I, I, there's a lot of people that do talk about plaque and i wish that they yeah. could do a three or four water fast you know because a yeah. lot of people don't see it so they don't believe in it you know? yeah shane talks about it a lot I, I i do talk to a lot of people who do talk about it yeah. yeah okay the next one ask if he only uses organic fruits and vegetables in his diet and when you're saying it's difficult to find an abundance of organic foods in my small town i would think maybe it is in bali too what's the kate what's the deal there with organic so in Bali, much like a lot of the tropical countries, you don't really know what's organic mm -hmm. because unless you're getting like local papayas from the, from a family down the street, you don't really know where the tree's coming from. So 
Um, the good news is that a lot of the fruit in the tropics, you don't need pesticides for it to grow abundantly. It just grows because it's the right environment. Mm -hmm. And so I don't typically eat things like berries here because I don't know where they're coming from. And so I focus on the, the queen 15 and I avoid the dirty dozen. So Me I too. eat things, you, you, you can look that up on Google and I eat things with a thick skin. So pretty much my, my daily food is like mangoes, pineapples, watermelons, papaya stuff that you eat the flesh on the inside of the fruit. So it's been filtered. If there was any pesticides, it's been filtered out through the roots. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. So and... I think it's very important to avoid pesticides for sure. But mm -hmm. the greens, if, if you're going to juice greens, definitely organic. If you're going to juice grapes uh, as organic as possible. I've seen people not juice them and, and be fine or not juice organic and be fine. But uh, I mean, chemicals destroy you. So that's the whole goal is to get away from chemicals. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. And somebody said, would you say you've healed your Crohn's completely? Yeah. hundred percent. So I don't have any digestive issues unless I overeat on fats too many days mm -hmm. in a row. And being on this journey for so long, it's each time, each year it's gotten better and better and better. And now say I have like way too much dirt and three or four days in a row, I'm like not even really digestively affected. It's more of like my energy now. Mm -hmm. And so my Crohn's is completely healed, but I still have toxicity in my body and, and I can still feel if I do eat too much fat, body odor will come back and I will have some like some pimples come back. Yeah. And so di digestively, like it, you do a couple water fast, a few long juice cleanses and get some of that plaque out. Like you're going to see your Crohn's go away, you know? I got to try water my, fast now. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do mine. I'm going to document mean, it. I know you I, I know you've interviewed quite a few people that do water fasting too like Alan Goldhammer and mm -hmm. and, Lauren and, Lauren. and yeah. And and most everybody ignores the water fasting though. Like everybody in this raw food community is like so focused on gourmet salads or juice cleanses. Yeah, it's true. Or, or simple for I mean, I actually kind of just discovered your, your your buddy a few months ago too. I knew who he was, but I never looked at his content. Who? Like, Who's he, that? Eli Oh yeah. Eli, he lives down the road from and, me here. Oh, oh, sick. And like, I know he did like a pretty long water fast, like water fasting is very important. And mm -hmm. most people just kind of skip it. And it's like, man, this should be the, the focus. We should make water fasting normal. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be like, Oh, that's crazy. You know, you're restricting. Know. It's like, no, 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 this is so normal. It's I been know. around since the beginning of time. It's not restrictive. It's the, it's unrestricting your body. That's what it's doing. Mm -hmm. You know? So true. People tell me, tell me that like I have an eating disorder or all this fasting is dangerous. It's like fasting is the safest thing that I could possibly do. Mm -hmm. It's getting out of the way and letting my body do what it was designed to do, you know? So I love mm -hmm. it. It's, for me, it's just been so incredibly beneficial. Yeah. And how do you have any advice or tips for how to deal with online hate or online, like people just coming at you saying you're, what you're doing is wrong or this and that, or people in your real life. I know like a lot of us can deal with that sometimes. How have you navigated that? Do you have any advice? I mean, I personally just don't give a shit what people think about me, but I get, Good. I get probably every morning I wake up and I look at my comment section on Instagram and it's like a hundred brutal comments about yeah. how skinny I am, how weak I am, how much I need meat, how ugly I am. My skin is orange. You look and great. Then, I mean, I feel like most people that see me, they're like, you look great, man. You're healthy. No, you look right? great. Really? Thank you. But I, I mean, I just just ignore it. You know, like, yeah, I, I, you learn if you're, if it's comments, it's totally different than in person. I never get a ha hatred in person ever. Me too. All people are always like, dude, you look glowing. You have Me so too. much energy. You know, like, what are you doing? You're glowing. And so it's really just for a dude, it's probably different than a woman, but being a, a dude who's been very skinny for a pretty freaking long time, it, I feel like it's just an open door for people to go, you skinny vegan. That's why you're skinny. It's like, dude, you have no idea. I was a carnivore and I was skinny. It's got nothing yeah. to do with my diet. And so, you know, it's just like focus on the people that give you positive reinforcement and just ignore the people that hate. Cause even if I was like the strongest, most beautiful man, people would still hate me. I mean, look at you, you're beautiful. You're thriving. Thanks. People still hate on you. You know, it's like, I get the blood sugar thing different. a lot. I probably wake up to a hundred comments every day about the blood sugars. Like, how do you not have blood sugar problems, diabetic with the juices, the smoothies, the fruits, but my blood sugars were a mess before I went raw. I was hypoglycemic. I would faint. It was like a freaking yeah. disaster. And my blood sugars almost seven years. I've never had one issue, never even one moment where I felt like how I used to feel, which was like faint and like totally off. If I didn't eat and stuff, I was a freaking mess. 
That's so amazing. like you must get that right. Cause you eat high fruit too. Like, do you how and how do your blood sugars feel versus before? My blood sugar is perfect. I have, I, I mean, during fasting and pre and post fasting, I take my blood sugar every day, sometimes multiple times a day. My resting blood sugar, when I wake up, my fasting blood sugar is around 70 to 90, you know, 80 ish, which yeah. is completely, normal. it's like yeah. 150, 160 after a meal. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. So, oh, that was my daughter. She just walked in. Hey guys, I'm just in the interview. The family's room. home. Yeah. They're home. It's okay. You guys can come in. Oh, yeah. no, hey guys. I just have two more questions. It's Jeff Juices. We're not live. Me? They just came in. They're like, you're not done yet? No, it's okay though. Okay, just a couple more questions. Somebody said, is it normal to feel fatigued during a juice fast? Let's go. Wait, 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 wait. Um, yes. No, I'm almost you guys can stay. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. We'll see you guys in a couple of minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Cute family. Thanks. Oh, you have to come with us. Okay. Yeah, sure. Just give mommy two more, five more minutes, okay? I'm almost done. Do you guys want to say hi? This is Victoria and this is May. And that was Ed. Hey, this guys. Jeff, Jeff Juicy. Hello, Canadians. So, okay, somebody was asking too if it's normal to feel fatigued when you do a juice fast. Yeah, definitely. Your body's cleansing. It's going through so many different transitions and changes and different organs are requiring more energy or less energy as they detoxify. And so mm -hmm. some days you might have five or six days of feeling euphoric and tons of energy, which might be filed, uh, followed by two or three weeks of just feeling like you need to rest the entire time. So it, yeah. it's completely, and I recommend just following the intuition in your body. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, I'm almost done. Okay. Well, this has been amazing. I've loved having you on. I want you to let everybody know where they can find you. Everybody go follow Jeff Juices. And if there's anything else you feel called to share with the audience that you think I missed or any inspiration, advice for somebody that might be going through a hard time, anything that comes to mind, then go ahead. And if you feel like you have nothing else to share, then I get it. And yeah, that would be great. Cool. Yeah. You can, I mean, just Jeff Juices. I'm mostly on Instagram. I, I do make YouTube videos, but mostly Instagram, just Jeff Juices. And uh, to, to leave some, some words of thought, just to, to plant people's heads. Eating raw food is normal. We should normalize eating a simple fruit diet. And there's a lot of focus on the gourmet and the salads. And I find that almost every person who eats a, a very simple diet, they find much better health and energy when they like really focus on the fruit because nothing else is attractive really in its raw form. Yeah. And so- you've never tried just eating fruit, the energy levels are much higher than eating gourmet raw or cooked food or cooked vegan. And really just don't take my advice. Don't take Jillian's advice. Don't take anybody's advice on this channel. Just try it for yourself. Yeah. Don't look at us as like the, the all seen answer. But I'm not a guru. I'm just a yeah. dude with information that it works for me and me most too. of the people that do it, but you got to experiment on yourself. And so guinea pig fat fasting, guinea pig juicing, yeah. Just go to the store, get some grapes, try it out. It'll most likely change your life if you do it the right way, if you stick with it long enough. Almost. Hopefully you won't become an ex-vegan. There are yeah. a lot of ex <laughs> but it's, it's all good. If you really understand it, it just makes perfect sense. We're not designed to eat animals. We're designed to live butt naked in the Garden of Eden eating fruit. So Yeah. All right. Well, this has been awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> and I'll put everything down below. So everybody go follow Jeff. He's amazing. And be sure to subscribe, like this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.